Hey guys, it's bro you whack and it's almost done. <laughs> the worst year in Overwatch is finally almost over. It is currently December 28th and I couldn't wait anymore to make this video. Every single year I talk about the previous year of Overwatch content while also just trying to sprinkle a little, little bit about me and what I've been doing because hey, I'm a person too. I have feelings that deserve to be talked about as well. But of course, first we gotta talk about our favorite toxicity filled game Overwatch. <laughs> and even though I started off this video saying that it was probably the worst year of Overwatch. We got me that this year it was pretty good. I mean, we got two whole FFA maps and, um, uh, oh, we actually got a brand new hero, Cole Cassidy, so that has to count for some, oh wait, that was just the Cowboys name change. Oh my god, this year sucks! So you've heard me talk about this time and time again, that this is the worst year that Overwatch has ever seen. And I think we all know at this point that it's all within reason, like it's because the Overwatch team is so focused on putting their resources towards Overwatch 2 that they're strategically, and I'm using air quotes, strategically, ignoring Overwatch 1 to try to make this game, the sequel of a beloved game like Overwatch, as great as it could possibly be. But while lots of people will point to the lack of added content as to why this is the worst year that Overwatch has ever seen, it's mainly the way that the Overwatch team, but more specifically Blizzard, has handled Overwatch in the year 2021. I mean, when the game is highlighted by news like Overwatch 2 getting delayed via tweets, not even by Blizzard themselves, or by Jeff Kaplan leaving the Overwatch team earlier in the year, or by the Cowboy in Overwatch getting a name change due to a sexual harassment lawsuit going on, mainly on the Activision and Blizzard side, it doesn't really leave a lot of hope for Overwatch. But that doesn't mean that Overwatch is completely hopeless, it just means that a lot of people that shouldn't be having to carry this game had to carry this game and that kind of is what happened with me and a lot of content creators for Overwatch in 2021. You saw a lot of people come together in a collaborative effort to try to keep this game alive and I would argue for the most part this year we've seen probably some of the best content Overwatch has ever seen all because a lot of people started to make more videos with each other and at least for me I started off this year making a lot of videos with Salty Fish and then I started to play with other people within the Overwatch community because I started to get less afraid of PC Overwatch, so I started to play with people like Stealth and Aqua Boost, and then I met Crystal, and me and Crystal started to get really close with one another because of my move to Florida, which I will get into later, but at least from my point of view, I made some of my favorite videos this year all because I finally broke out of my shell. And while it was new for you and also for me, I would say for the most part that's been one of my favorite things about this year was that I was able to well make new friends and being able to play with other people as well but that doesn't mean I ventured away from what people know me as which is the overwatch guy that makes videos kind of by himself and I've still been able to do that too you know I'm still making my ranking videos throughout this whole entire year I still made my funny competitive videos in fact I try to make even more funny videos outside of competitive but I also just started to venture off into other things because like I said before you know overwatch didn't provide us a lot of content this year I mean while we did get the overwatch 2 live stream which were awesome and big news we also got little sprinkles and crumbs of content like the FFA maps that I mentioned before we got crossplay which was a big deal for PlayStation and Xbox users not really so much PC and switch players and we also got the Cole Cassidy name change which was I think the biggest highlight of overwatch this year which is kind of sad so like I said it kind of left a lot of content creators kind of scrounging trying to figure out what to do whether it was collaborative efforts or trying to venture off into other things which is what I also did too. While Overwatch was my bread and butter this year, you start to see things like the Amazon streams, which I think was a fan favorite and something that I truly enjoyed. I really wish my internet wasn't so bad so that I can actually do the $1,000 Amazon stream, but that's in the future. Maybe we'll get back to that. But while the Amazon streams were fun and goofy and one-off videos, you also saw the occasional Apex videos, which I think a lot of people appreciated me not just jumping ship to Apex, but just trying to sprinkle it in every now and then. Again, I always say that I never want to jump ship from Overwatch, but I also don't want to be stupid like if I get invited to EA to play the brand new map or if I get to play the brand new legend early I'm gonna do that because I know there's some people that really want to see that but would also like to see maybe new series with overwatch which is where the bronze series comes in where I spectate your bronze gameplay and that was also a fan favorite like looking back on all this stuff that I brought in the year 2021 while they aren't the biggest projects that we've ever seen and while they weren't 
game changing for my channel it was still something that i'm glad i at least took the chance on in 2021 because going into 2022 i'm not so afraid to play the brand new legend or i'm not so afraid to make a brand new series in overwatch and fears of it flopping because it's not chef you whack or a top five series or a funny moment series that i've done in the past i mean this year was truly the embodiment of taking calculated risks just taking a chance on something and seeing if it's stuck i mean at the very beginning the first calculated risk was trying to stream every single day that was my literal new year's resolution and i did that i streamed every single day for 90 days <laughs> and i laugh at that because i'm not disappointed that i didn't stream every single day because after that 90th day i as sad as this might sound i legit just wanted to die it was so hard to stream every single day and i know that sounds weird but you have to understand that it's not like i'm a 17 year old that has no life responsibilities no to turn on the stream and to stream at minimum three hours every single day playing overwatch when afterwards i still got to make a video and also take care of pancakes take care of the house and also just try to have a social life it, i just couldn't do it i sacrificed so much sleep and so much mental health that after that 90 days i was like yeah i'm not doing this anymore i'm glad i'm not streaming every single day but what that allowed me to discover is what i could do i could try to stream three days a week while also trying to post at least five days a week. And while I might have failed at streaming every single day, I succeeded at being able to focus on what I truly enjoy, which is making videos for YouTube. Well, yes, I still enjoy streaming, not every single day. If I had a choice between making a video every single day and streaming every single day, I would try to do both, but I'll pick a video over live streaming. And I feel like because I've been able to figure that out and I've been able to get a better balance, at least in the middle of the year after figuring out I can't stream every single day, that allowed me to take my next calculated risk, which is joining the Florida Mayhem. Joining the Overwatch League was always a goal of mine, not as a player, but as a content creator. Obviously, I'm not good enough to be a player, but you know, for years it was always seen like as an unachievable goal because when I went to Overwatch teams and I said hey I'm willing to be on your team for free I just got ignored by every single one of them so I figured okay if they're not willing to take me for free I'm never gonna join the Overwatch League so when I got approached by the CEO of the Florida Mayhem like the guy that runs the show I was just kind of flabbergasted first I was like homie why didn't you approach me earlier when I was willing to do this for free now you gotta pay me a salary but the second thing is that I was just kind of like, wait, wait, I thought I wasn't worthy of the Overwatch League. Now you want to pay me and actually let me be on your team? And not only that, like while I was going to get a salary, which I'm very lucky, they also wanted me to live in Florida and pay for my living situation in Florida. Like this is literally what I wanted for years to be making videos streaming on the side and also be on an overwatch league team and after he approached me and we got a contract all sorted out and i figured out i was moving to florida i had a moment of realization that this is exactly where i wanted to be after i graduated college back in 2019 but even though things were going great on the surface the way that i felt didn't match the way that things were in reality because at that moment i probably felt the worst that i've ever felt and if i'm gonna be honest i still kind of feel that way you know after after all this excitement of moving to Florida and joining the Overwatch League and being able to have my announcement video on the Florida Mayhem channel, after that's all passed, I kind of just was left with that same feeling that I felt well before I started talking to the CEO of the Florida Mayhem. And if I'm going to be honest, I don't know what's causing it. I don't know if it's because I'm burnt out. I don't know if it's some form of like anxiety and depression. It's very aggravating not being able to know why I'm not happy. You know, all this great stuff is going on. You know, I'm financially stable. I joined the Overwatch League. I have a beautiful dog. I have a dream job. Why do I feel the worst that I've ever felt? Is it because I'm selfish? And I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. The only thing that I've been able to really figure out why I've been feeling so bad when everything is going good is that when Overwatch is doing bad, I associate myself so much with the game that I also think that I'm doing bad. And in a way, that kind of is true because, well, when Overwatch isn't doing great, the channel isn't doing great. And in a sad, twisted way, that is slightly true because, well, I see the numbers. I see the channels in the worst position that's ever been, but it's, n <laughs> it's no coincidence 
and that's when Overwatch is in the worst position because there is no new content. The Blizzard lawsuit also had an impact on Overwatch, even though the Overwatch team really didn't have anything to do with it. But because they are made by Blizzard by association, they are under that same lawsuit too. And because Jeff Kaplan left, and because there is no new heroes, and because a lot of people are leaving Overwatch, it just it feels awful. And I really do think that's why I feel awful because I want the game to succeed because I love the game too. But when Overwatch succeeds, I I also succeed too. That's why I say that this is the worst but also the best year for Overwatch because well at least in the case of me I've been able to achieve all my dreams but in the case of Overwatch I mean I mean we know <laughs> like we all know. This year had a lot of negativity and left a lot of scars that would truly never be healed. I'm mainly looking at the Blizzard lawsuit and while I didn't talk about it a lot in this video, I've talked about it so much this year that you already know my stance on that subject and it's just... It, it's left a lot of people hopeless and maybe that's another reason why I'm feeling so terrible is that it puts a lot of pressure on me to try to be positive and try to be hopeful for Overwatch 2 and going into 2022 don't worry guys Overwatch 2 is gonna be the savior and I don't know if it will I don't know I can really only bank on what I'm doing and I'm trying my best and maybe that's also why I'm feeling even more tired is because I'm putting in way more effort than I probably need to to try to make things work for Overwatch and going into 2022 I don't know what to expect I won't make a separate video though talk about what Overwatch does need and what I want to do going into the new year but I don't want to be overly hopeful saying that Overwatch 2 is going to be the saving grace I'm not going to be negative saying that there is no hope for Overwatch but I am going to be realistic and just try to keep my expectations low and if the overwatch team delivers on the greatest sequel that an fps game has ever seen then i i mean look at who's going to be able to reap all the rewards all the people that stuck around and hopefully that happens anyway guys i love you guys and thank you so much for sticking through what is probably my worst year but at the same time also my best year and hopefully in 2022 it becomes just my best year so i love you guys Thank you guys for watching. More Overwatch videos to come. And bye.